We are back with the pop quiz. Tammy Govea, Democrat, running for lieutenant governor. So, you grew up in Lowell and now live in Acton. Your district includes parts of Acton as well as all of neighboring Concord and Carlisle and parts of Chelmsford. At the Battle of Lexington and Concord during the Revo Revolutionary War, Minutemen from what town led the fight at the North Bridge? And the options are on the screen there. Acton, Chelmsford, or Concord? Acton. Yes. <laughs> Under the leadership of Captain Isaac Davis, who died in the fight. And if you didn't know that, it would have been really embarrassing. Yes, it would have. So that was a, that was a given. And most people probably assume Concord, but yeah. That's right, exactly. <laughs> Uh, number two, one of the founding fathers of the Sesame Street Muppets grew up in Acton. Who was it? Was it Jim Henson, Frank Oz, or Carol Sp Spinney? Carol Spinney. Right, who played the part of? Uh, Big Bird. That's correct. Yes, yes. And, um, and he was always uh, the man behind Big Bird and Oscar the Grouch. Um, you're a graduate of Mount Holyoke College. In 1901, which was, I think, before you graduated, <laughs> yes. students selected four colors to represent each of the classes, mm. a tradition that continues to this day. On the screen are three colors. One of them is not among the class colors at Mount Holyoke. Which one is it? Is it hunter green, royal purple, or golden yellow? Royal purple. That's correct. Well, you're, all right, three for three. Pretty good. Right, My color see, was blue. Let's see if you can close this. Oh, yours was blue? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Um, that's right, Royal Bill is one of the other colors. Um, and then Crimson is another one. Uh, you would like to be the state's next lieutenant governor, so let's finish up the pop quiz mm -hmm. there. Um, Evelyn Murphy, the first woman to mm -hmm. serve as Massachusetts lieutenant governor, had a frosty relationship with Governor Mike Dukakis. Before that, Governor King had his own issues with his LG. Your question, who was Ed King's lieutenant governor? Was it Tom O'Neill, was it John Kerry, or was it Robert Murphy? This is totally a guess. I'm going to go with, hmm, Tom O'Neill? That's a great guess. <laughs> He's the son, actually, of Tip O'Neill, who was the Speaker okay. of the U.S. House. <laughs> Very good job. <laughs> I know. For, that, you did great. Thank you. You are campaigning on your decades yes. as a community activist and also an organizer, but your experience as a politician is really less than four years. So why are you jumping into one of the highest profile statewide jobs now? Why do you want that? Yeah, so I got in this race over a year ago, and it's really um, because of the things that I saw and how we have been leaving so many hardworking families behind. I've experienced it myself as a single mom for 14 years, and I've seen it as a state representative how difficult and how bureaucratic uh, we make it for families to access ba basic services. And then when it came to the pandemic response, the privatized response that we had in the face of um, a global pandemic really uh, kicked me in the gut, kicked so many public health experts experts in the gut. There was so much more we could have done to make sure that people had access to the vaccine, had access to rapid tests, had, you know, the supplies and the resources that they need to take care of their families and their community. So I got into this race to be a different type of lieutenant governor, one who was focused on the health, the well-being, and the dignity of every single resident in our state, really to tackle the big issues that we're facing by getting at the root causes of what's driving the issues from housing to child care to mental health and the climate crisis. Let's talk a little bit about what it takes to win an election mm -hmm. like this. Of your two Democratic opponents, Kim Driscoll has the party's endorsement, and she has name recognition, probably a little bit more than either of you do. Eric Lesser has a million dollars in the bank. Our UMass WCV poll that came out this past week shows you in third place. Another poll shows nearly 70% of the registered voters in Massachusetts have never heard of you. Isn't that a lot to overcome in just 10 weeks, which is when the primary is going to be held? Yeah, well, I mean, some of the polls show that, you know, upwards of 60 percent of the voters in this particular race are undecided. Um, we are polling uh, within percentage points of each other. So we feel really proud of the ways that we have busted through a lot of expectations that folks had. We came in second at the convention. We were outspent at the convention and surpassed, you know, three people, two of whom are state senators, one who's a businessman who's self-funded. Uh, we're really proud of the grassroots momentum that we have in this race and you know the benefit for me is I've been in this race for a year really building meaningful relationships with folks all across the Commonwealth it's why we were able to collect our 14,000 signatures not spending a dime to collect those signatures we did it just with volunteers um, and I do have name recognition from running the Massachusetts chapter of the Women's March and some of the tough stands that I have taken in the State House around transparency and access to government so we're just going to keep you know working hard and building that momentum that we've already gained in this race. Well, good luck to you. Well, Our thank thanks you. to Tammy Govea for joining mm -hmm. us today.